Overall in the state of California, 43% of students speak a language other than English. When we look at students who are ages 0 through 8, 60% of those are dual language learners. There's lots of research out there about reading by nine, so that if our students are reading by nine, they are going to be successful. The kids that get hurt the most are the poor students, are the students of color. Why? Because we want to remediate. So we teach them, this is the sound, this is the letter. We just give them more of the same in those small chunks, and they, they get completely turned off. Good morning, class. Good morning, Miss Well, I am super excited to be here with you. I have a really fun job where I get to be a teacher of teachers. SEAL stands for Sobrato Early Academic Language, and it is a model of instruction that prioritizes and centralizes the needs of English learners. We understand that in the way to best prepare students, we really want to be integrating language development in all that we're doing, not teaching English or language development in isolation. We have sometimes previously been under the misconception in schools that kids need to learn English first before they can learn content. What we know now is we can't wait. So one of the real missions of SEAL is to embed that language practice in with this rich, interesting, engaging content based on our science and our social studies standards. All right, so we're going to start off by talking about its habitat. Everybody say habitat. Habitat. Habitat is where something lives. So the habitat of the oak tree is the temperate forests. When you hear the signal word, you're going to turn to a partner and you're going to tell them where the habitat of the oak tree is. Deciduous. Deciduous. Leaves fall down. So today in the demo, you saw a variety of different structures and strategies in place. You saw us doing choral response. You saw using lots of think-pair shares. You saw groups having a chance to put their heads together. If the only times that we're allowing for talk is the teacher talks, then one student raises their hand and they share, we're not going to be providing our English language learners with the many rich opportunities to practice language in the context of our classroom. Dedicated meteorologist, dedicated meteorologist, dedicated meteorologist, predicting around the city. Good job! I like this model because um, it's very student engaged. Children who are five, six years old or younger, um, they learn to play. And you hear them, you hear them using, I'm a meteorologist and I'm forecasting the weather. I hear them doing those things. And I don't think I would be able to do that in a conventional um, classroom. With this model, we've seen our kids just blossom in you know, vocabulary development, their writing has improved, and we've also been able to reclassify students earlier in the year than in times past. We're saying that this is about building the capacity of teachers to really understand and have the expertise to support English learners. Meanwhile, it benefits all kids. It's a very unique partnership with SEAL. We recognize their incredible theoretical and research-based approach both to professional learning and instructional strategies but also look at professional learning on a long-term basis. SEAL was very intentional in its design that we weren't going to be a dump and run model of professional development. We find that for teachers, they can hear about strategies endlessly, but to actually see it happening live in action with their kids is what really makes it come alive for them, both in terms of buy-in and in terms of really understanding at a deep level how the strategies support the students. The point of having this written here is that we want to have a record um, so that later when they're doing some writing, they have something to pull from. So we really understand that teachers thrive and learn best when they have a sustained experience and they are able to really go back to their workplace and practice and get receive coaching and collaborate. You know for you, your next step is, I'm going to teach characteristics or 
another Ola that's going to focus on the language function. So we have a full-time coach now, and we meet with her regularly, and she helps us um, plan out our units, and she gives us our resources, and so that's something that we, we do uh, appreciate. Hoy es miércoles. Mi, ayúdenme por sílaba. Mi. The state of California has voted um, in favor of Prop 58, really affirming the state's desire for a multilingual California. Many of our teachers are really recovering from an era in which they were given the message that you may not speak any language other than English in the classroom. And it's very clear now that in fact bilingualism is the best way to go and that there are many very intentional ways where teachers can use that home language to better support them in understanding the content, in understanding the curriculum, while at the same time helping them get to those rigorous levels of English that they need to be successful. Some of the parents were kind of hesitant at first because, you know, they're coming from a Spanish-speaking country and they want them to assimilate. They want them to learn the English language. But as you continue to talk to them, they kind of see the benefit of the two languages. They feel like they're able to help their kids. They feel that they have power, that they're validated. Their culture is validated. Their language is validated. Our parents are so special to us. They are an integral piece of the puzzle. To have the parents working with us in developing their children's education is uh, an asset. Christian's got it. Oh great, Joanna's got it. Magdalena, yeah, come on in. Oh, Marina, come closer. Come so closer. today we had Marina, who's a newcomer, and in listening to some of her Think Pair shares, she was sharing in Spanish, and I was able to then understand how oh, she is fully comprehending this. She doesn't yet have the English language, but she can say it all in Spanish. So when we create spaces where students are celebrated for what they have and encouraged to share in their home language, whether or not we're in a bilingual classroom, we're able to really have a strength-based way of viewing these students, of viewing their families as assets. Can you say good job, Marina? Good job. Good job. Good job. You want to share that? You can share that. Good job. <laughs> it is a totally new day in California. We have clear recognition of bilingualism and the value of multilingualism that really sets the direction for our state and connects all of the various policy initiatives. This is our first year with our dual language program and we have started it in kindergarten. Our plan is to create children who are bilingual and biliterate. We are able to capitalize on the lessons learned from the past, on the research, and to be able to move forward with information that allows us to think very intentionally about how we develop, refine, bolster existing programs, but most importantly, about who has access to those programs, about who's staffing the programs, about how we're best equipping leaders and teachers to provide the highest quality programs possible. What are we? I told you that you're what? Bilingual. Bilingual. Very good. What does that mean? That means that we speak in two languages. That means that we read in two languages. And that means that we 